Okay, so we're up to now the last part of the topic on coordinate geometry, <coughs> and we're looking at uh, non-linear relationships. Okay, so this is um, a little bit long, it's about 13 slides, so um, we'll just work our way through it. So, so far we've looked at straight lines, and straight lines are called linear relationships. So straight lines are called linear. So now we're looking at other types of relationships which can be graphed, but they don't form straight lines. So not straight lines. Okay, copy that down. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is a family called exponential, and these are ones that involve growth. Okay, so um, when you have sort of bacteria growing, um, or you might have um, rabbit populations growing, rabbit populations grow exponentially, um, money grows, like when you have compound interest, that grows. Okay, so there's examples in real life to do with exponentials. Um, we also have, you can have a thing called decay, when you have maybe radioactive elements decaying, using, uh, losing their potency. Okay, but we're just going to look at growth for these ones. So what we're looking at is a family of functions that look like this, where this time, okay, this is going to be a number, okay, it's a constant number like a 2, okay, like a 2 or a 3, but this time the variable x is the power, okay, so when we did straight lines it was y equals mx plus b, so x is just the variable on the same line, so to speak, but now we've got powers, okay? So that's what the exponentials look like, 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 5 to the x. Okay, so copy that down and ready, come across. So what do they look like? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to graph them. Okay, now I'm not too sure on your calculators, on my Casio, I've got this button with like an upside down V, but I'm, I'm not really sure what you guys have. You might have, hope you might have a button that has A to the x, but hopefully you've got something like that. So if you've got the A to the x, um, let me know, but otherwise I'm going to assume you've got a V. So we're doing a table of values, and so on your calculator, um, if we want to find the value of 2 to the minus 2, so 2 to the power of minus 2, I put a 2, I put the upside down V, I put a minus sign in front of the next 2, I press equals, and I get 0.25, which is a quarter. Okay, and similarly, 2 to the minus 1 equals 0.5, and 2 to the 0, that's one of the indice, indice laws, 2 to the 0 equals 1. So what I want you to do is just finish off the next 3, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3, fill in that table of values, and when you're ready, um, press play again. So pause, find those values, and then come back. Okay, so when we did 2 to the power of 1, I'll oh, change colours, you should have got a 2, 2 to the power of 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 to the power of 3, 2 cubed is 8. So you see the numbers are going doubling, okay, from a quarter to a half to a whole to two to four to eight. So the power, this this number here, is what's happening. It's everything's being doubled. Okay, so let's have a look and see what happens when we graph it. So come across. Okay, so I'm going to graph it. So at two to the minus two, we were down at a quarter, which is about there. Two to the minus one was a half. Two to the zero was one. Two to the one was one. 2 squared is 4, and 2 cubed is way up there, like I've, I didn't allow enough space. So this is going to be very, okay, so there's going to be other values behind, but they're going to be small. And then as it comes through, then it starts growing, because every time you go to another number, it doubles. Now, we've got a bit of a bump in there, but it just, it just goes up really sharp, okay? So because you're doubling, doubling, doubling each time, Okay, so that's the graph of an exponential. So this is y equals 2 to the x. Okay, so let's copy that down and come across. So again, I'm going to call them simple because they can get, they can get harder. Like for instance, we're not going to study, but I could have y equals 2 to the x plus 3 and things like that. So uh, I'm not going to worry about that this time. I'm just going to do 2 to the x, 3 to the x, and 4 to the x. And I'm just trying to show you really roughly now, down here, it's pr a little bit dodgy. I've, I've sort of haven't done as carefully. But basically, the higher the, the base, okay, so the base is 2, the base is 3, the base is 4, the quicker the curve, <coughs> excuse me, increases. Because when we had 2 to the x, they're doubling. When we have 3 to the x, they're going to triple. And when we have 4 to the x, or 5 to the x, or 6 to the x, it's just going to get quicker and quicker. Okay, but the other features are the y-intercept, the y-intercept is always 1 for all the functions. But you'll notice on the left-hand side, um, 
when you have the bigger numbers like this number at this bottom one would be 4 to the x and then the next one is 3 to the x and the next one is 2 to the x. So on this side, on the left hand side, the, num the graph on the top is the smaller one but as they come through the zero, uh, come through at x equals zero, which is going to be one for all of them, then they go up sharper and sharper, depending on the base. So on the right-hand side, they're going up sharper. On the left-hand side, they're going down smaller. Okay. So other things to look at is you can't. There are no negative x values. You uh, so no negative y values. You can't put you can't put any number for x and get a uh, negative value. Okay. So just copy that down. I call them simple ones. Okay, so copy that down when you're ready to come across. So what happens when x is negative? Okay, so if x is negative, it still doesn't, there's still nothing down underneath, but what happens is the curve goes the opposite way. So rather than when we had the other way, what we had it going, we had it going up to the right. So when we had x was positive, when x was positive, you know, y equals 2 to the x, but it's intuitive we're going up to the right but when we have x is negative it goes up to the left okay so that's what happens when x is negative so copy that when you ready to come across okay so now we're looking at another family called quadratics okay quadratic functions and this time we're back to x is like a on the bottom like where we had y equals mx plus b but now i've got a higher power i've got a power two now there are other functions called cubics when you have power 3 or quartics when you have power 4 but in year 9 we're just going to look at really straightforward quadratics with a power 2. So the easiest simplest one is just y equals x squared. Okay so this number out the front is just a constant and in this particular case it's 1x squared so a is 1 but I could have 2x squared or 3x squared. Okay so what I want you to do you've all got on your calculator or you all should have on your calculator an x squared button. So if you push, if you put uh, minus two in brackets, and then you square it, you should get four. Okay, minus two times minus two is four. Okay, so can you uh, pause the tape and then fill in the rest of the values, and when you're ready, come back. Okay, so minus one squared is one, zero squared is zero, one squared is one, two squared is four. So there are your values that you should have got. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plot it and see what the shape is. Okay, so we've got minus 2, x is minus 2, we get a 4. When x is minus 1, we get a 1. When x is 0, we get a 0. And then it starts going back up the other way. And so what we've got is this shape. Like a cup, okay? And the curve extends because x can be bigger. Now this sort of cup shape, it's like a cup. But what we do is we call it, it has a special name, and it's called a parabola. Okay? So this is called, this cup is called a parabola. So whenever you have a quadratic, whenever you have a power 2, okay, you will always get what's called a parabola. Okay, so copy that down. And when you're ready, come to across the next slide. Okay, so what I've got is some other, other parabolas. I've got y equals x squared on the outside, y equals 2x squared will go up sharper, y equals 5x squared will go up sharper, but they all go through, they all go through the origin, okay? Now, they, <coughs> excuse me, um, we're, this year we're just looking at simple ones, we can um, uh, in year 10 make them a lot more complicated, but in year 9 we're just doing simple ones. Okay, so copy those down and when you're ready come across the next slide. Okay, so what happens when the, uh, sorry, not x is negative, if, I'll change that to if a is negative, okay? So now we've got a minus 3, so sorry about that, if a is negative, okay? So I'll put a negative out the front. And what happens is, basically, it's just straightforward. and go the other way. So if, if we'd had, change colour, Okay, that would be y equals positive 3x squared and turning upside down, y equals minus 3x squared. Okay, so it's, it shapes the other way. Um, you won't be assessed on this uh, in terms of other names, 
But when, it, when, the cup, when the cup is like that, it's called concave up. And when the cup is down, it's called concave down. But in year nine, you don't have to worry about that. But it's, it's concavity up or concave up or concave down. Okay, so when you have a negative in front of the x squared, it's always going to be concave down. And when you have a positive, it's always going to be concave up. Okay, so a positive x squared is a smile. We call that a smile. And when we have a negative x squared, we call it a frown or sad face. Okay, copy that down and come across. Okay, so the last part we're going to do, I think, and I've actually got a couple more things to do. Okay, I'm just going to, next part is I'm just going to add a number at the back, add or subtract a number at the back. So what I'm going to do is just show you what's happening. So when we have y equals x squared, okay, I'll just show you what happens. So there's, okay, that's a cup shape up. So this is y equals x squared. And all that happens when I add 3 is the curve, still a concave up, but now, instead of, instead of turning at 0, it now the cup turns at 3. Okay, but it's still the same shape. But now we've got y equals x squared. So y equals x squared plus 3. So I just take my basic y equals x squared concave up parabola, turning at 0, I just turn it at 3. Okay? So copy that, and when you're ready, come across. So have a go at these yourself. Um, what I want to do is maybe just think about the basic shape first, y equals x squared, or y equals minus x squared, and then, then look at the back number. Okay, so pause. Uh, these, these aren't easy, so I'm, you know, I don't mind some struggle here. It's okay to have some struggles. But pause and have a go and see what you do when you come back. Okay, so I'm gonna, just going to draw in That's y equals x squared. And then what I'm going to do is, because it says minus 1 at the back, change colours, okay? I'm just going to draw the same parabola. And this time, it turns at minus 1. Okay, so it's not... Okay, you're not going to... You don't need to draw the green in, but basically, you've got your basic concave up parabola, and then you just drop it down minus one. Okay. In this next one, just to save time, I've got a concave down parabola. I'll draw it in. Y equals x minus x squared is a concave down. And basically, I'm just going to move it up three. So rather than turning it zero, I'm going to turn it three. And so... That value is three. So that's y equals minus x squared plus three. So you turn a concave, okay, so it's minus x squared, so it's concave down, so it's an unhappy, sad parabola, and then it just turns it positive 3, whereas the first one was a happy parabola because it was a positive x squared, and then you just drop it down 1. Okay, copy that down. Come across. Okay, so this might be, I've got 12, what's the next for that? Okay, so I've got two more slides to go. So uh, finding the x value... Okay, so if I'm, given, if I'm given a y value, can you find the x value? Like, for instance, if y equals x squared plus 1, what was the x value? Okay, so basically what it is, we've got y equals x squared plus 1, which is a happy parabola. Okay, so there's... Okay, so it's turning at 1. So I've got y equals x squared plus 1. And so basically what the question's asking is, if y equals 5, what's the value there? And what's the value there? Okay, so I've got my y equals x squared plus 1, which is a happy parabola, pushed up 1. And at, x, at y equals 5, what was the x value? And there's going to be 2. So here's how you solve it. So y is 5, so put 5 out the front, equals x squared plus 1. And like you're solving equations, that plus 1 has to go across the other side. So you take it across the other side by subtracting one from both sides. So four equals x squared. Now here's a, there's a button on your calculator that looks like a square root sign. But because there's two answers, what we do is we do x equals the square root of four. 
and we put a plus and a minus because there's going to be two answers and the square root of 4 is 2. So that number there so that number there is 2 and that number there is minus 2. Okay, so on your calculator there's a square root button but you've got to put a plus and a minus sign out the front. Okay, copy that down and come across to the last page. Okay, so the last one, the last page is finding an equation from the graph. Okay, so again, I've just got, a, um, these ones would be really straightforward. Um, I've got a happy parabola, concave up parabola. Um, the bottom is three. So straight away, we've got this equation, y equals ax squared plus b. Okay, it's, it's a squared because it's a parabola. Um, it's a plus b because it's being pushed up. It's not, it's not turning at the origin, so it's not an ax squared. Like if, if it was turning at the origin, then it would just be an ax squared, okay? But this time it's turning at 3, so it has to be an ax squared plus b. And wherever it turns, that's the b value, okay? Now, to find the equation, they give you one other clue. So when x is 1, y equals 4, okay? So what we do is we just put the numbers into the equation. So y is 4. A is I don't know, X is 1, and I have to square it because it says squared plus 3. So 4 equals 1 squared is 1, so A plus 3, and then plus 3 becomes minus 3, so 4 minus 3 equals 1, and so the answer is Y equals AX squared, so 1X squared plus 3, which is just plain old X plus 3. Okay, so that's the equation. Okay, and that's the last one. And you've basically, that's the finish of the topic. Okay, thanks for that. Bye.